Hello, this is Mark Franklin of Franklin Creative Media and Streaming Media Magazine. And today we're going to have another vintage tech talk and we're going to be talking about the first video cassette that was introduced in 1971, Sony's Umatic format. And the reason it's called Umatic is when you look, take a look inside and you see the way it, it loads the tape against the heads, it's in a U format. I'm going to talk about a couple of my decks that I have here. They are the latest version of Sony's professional U-Matics. Um, there was one higher version that uh, had built-in time-based correctors. That was the BVU series, but this is the professional smaller version, the VO 9800 and 9850. The decks look pretty much exactly the same as each other, but the VO 9850 is an editing recorder which allows for assemble and insert editing individual audio and video tracks. Each Umatic is a stereo deck with two linear audio tracks. The one I have in front of me is just a simple recorder. It does not allow for insert editing, which we haven't done tape editing like this for about 20 years. We use these mainly for playback. So as far as playback goes, there's really no difference between the 9850 and the 9800. What sets these decks apart from some of the earlier models, the original series of the VO 1000 models, the VO9800 and VO9850 were the two first Umatic SP, which stands for Superior Performance Decks. The original Umatic spec was about 280 lines of resolution, and these boosted up to 330. So you got a bit better of a picture, a little better of a color bandwidth, I think, also with it. These also included XLR audio connections for higher quality audio connections. They're very strong, very rugged decks. Originally, when Sony invented these decks, we had these tapes that were considered compact at the time because everything else was giant reel-to-reel -reel tapes. These were the full-size one-hour cassettes. Uh, sometimes they were loaded with less, sometimes more, but the maximum was an hour. Sometime later, somebody came out with a 75-minute tape. They weren't too common, though. And these generally hold up pretty well if you've got a Sony, Maxell, and a couple other brands. If you have an Ampex brand, Umatic, chances are if it's gonna play, it's gonna have to be baked first because uh, Ampex had these this horrible tape formulation that over time it oozed and stuck to each other. So the only way to actually make Ampex tapes play is bake them and that's a whole, whole other subject for another video. When the Umatic tapes first came out, they only had these large shell cassettes for taping off of TV. The first decks were top loaders. You'd put it in and push the door down and it would load the tape and you record off TV. At the time, those decks cost about $1,500, $1,600. And back then that was a lot of money. A, a car didn't cost much more. The home market really didn't go for them, but the educational and industrial market started buying them up. With the next Umatic series from the 1000 to 2000, it was aimed squarely at the institutional, educational, corporate market for doing uh, their own in-house video, a lot less expensive than using film. Around 1974, Sony introduced their first portable a VO3800. I don't have one of those, but I do have a VO6800, which was two generations later. These could take a 20 minute cassette. Ever since the two series Umatic decks, they can play back the compact field cassettes. There were no uh, portable decks to play the full size tapes. And these portable tapes were amazing at the time. You can get a whole 20 minute recording time on these cassettes. And for news crews that need to just tape something and bring it back and edit it or go into their truck and beam it back to the station, these were a godsend. Until Betacam came out in the mid 80s, these were the news gathering media that most stations used. You can see here is the, the 20 minute and here's the full size. When we do tape transfers from the Umatic format, whether it's Umatic SP 
or a regular U-Matic, we still run them in these U-Matic SP machines. Even though there's no time-based corrector in this machine itself, we have an external time-based corrector that we run the composite signal from the U-Matic 2, which makes it into a YC or S video signal, which improves the quality of the video signal. And we get a very, very nice signal. I recently digitized about 30, 30 minute cable shows from the late 80s, early 90s, and the client was just so pleased with how good they looked that uh, he actually tipped us. The Umatic machines were truly revolutionary at the time. Many of them still hold up. I found them fairly easy to work on. The little bit that I've done, I've learned a lot from YouTube and how to fix these. And several times I thought that uh, my 9850 behind me over here was done, but uh, I always found a way to fix it, even though I'm not a trained video engineer. Beyond the Umatic professional decks, we also have digital beta cam, beta cam SP, regular beta, super VHS, Hi8, and many other formats that we can help you transfer from tape to a digital file. If you have any questions about Franklin Creative Media's tape to digital transfer service, please let me know. I look forward to helping you.